So today, by the grace of God, we are going to be talking about the gains of COVID-19. The scripture lets me know that in everything we should give thanks to God. It says, in all things, give thanks to God. Why do we have to give thanks to God? Because in all things, if we can look properly, there are benefits, there are advantages, there are rewards for every season, be it summer, be it winter, be it fall, be it spring, whatever the season is, there's always something. There must be a reason why God has created it or why God allowed it. So tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, brethren, um, we will be looking at the gains of, um, of COVID-19. What are the gains of COVID-19? Um, we know that we are practicing what is called social distancing or quarantine, self-isolation. You know, it's gainful, and we are going to go through the scripture today to see what are the benefits. Now, number one is that distancing or quarantine or isolation restricts distraction so that we can focus on our love for God, our love for God. You will remember um, the account of Father Abraham that when God called him, when God called Father Abraham, he called him for a purpose in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. He says, now the Lord had said to Abraham, I want you to get out of your country. I want you to get out of your comfort zone where you know people from your family, even from your father's house. And I'm going to take you to a land that I will show you, you know. So God called him to distance himself from distraction so that he can focus on God alone. And also, um, Jacob, if you remember too, we've gone through this, the account of Jacob, he says at the beginning of his journey, also Jacob was alone. He was alone to connect himself with God. He was in what you can call self-quarantine, self-quarantine, which enabled him to focus on God. And that was what led him to dream that was why he was able to dream and he was connected with God. So you can see that it's good that there are advantages when we are alone, when we are alone. And um, also, when Jacob was coming back, when he was coming back from Laban's house, when he was coming back, he did not know what lied ahead of him. So what did he do? What he did, what he did was to isolate himself. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 23 to 26. Genesis 32, verses 23 to 26. He says, now, Jacob took his family, his possession, and everything, the wives and the children, and he asked them to cross over the brook, and he sent them over. Then he went to be alone. And while he was alone, the scripture tells us that a man wrestled with him until break, breaking of the day. Verse 25, now when he was, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And what happened is that Jacob said, look, the reason why I have come is that you may bless me, so I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And the scripture tells us that Jacob was blessed. When we are alone and there's no one to turn to, that is the appropriate time for us to turn to Jesus and to set our heart to seek him. That is the appropriate time. See, at this time is the time for us to set our heart to seek the Lord. Actually, it's an appropriate time to sing songs to God, to rejoice before him. Do not be bothered about what is going on in the world at all. Um, I guess I was speaking to a brother, I think, um, yesterday, and the friend was telling me that he had stopped listening to the news 
because he found out that even during this period, people are still making money. So why should he just sit down and be watching news and you know following what is going on? So he would rather do something else. So which is good. So this is the appropriate time for us to think. Now, when we are alone and there's nobody to turn to. You sing songs like, My faith looks up to thee, Thou lamp of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, Take all my guilt away, Oh, let me from this day be, oh, so this is the appropriate time for us to examine ourselves and to rededicate ourselves to the Lord. You see, so we ask God to inspire our zeal. The second standard and third, my zeal inspires. You know, you sing song that will inspire you, that will inspire your zeal. That will inspire your dream. So don't sing song that will remind you of um, Babylon. You remember the song of Babylon? By the riverside Babylon. You remember that song? They were crying because they were thinking of what was going on. So that is not the song. The song you sing, it is song that will inspire your, your zeal. That is a song that asks God to be your guide, to be your guide. So I know you will know those songs. Now, so distancing, uh, quarantine is a good time for us to separate ourselves, to be alone with God, to seek Him, to open our heart, to receive from Him, to pray and sing unto Him, to be our guide, to inspire our zeal, and also to increase our faith. Another benefit, another gain of this period of COVID-19 distancing is that it provides an occasion for us to, to bond and to grow in faith. To bond and to grow in faith. James 2, 23, James chapter 2, verse 23 says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. So you can see that when Pastor Abraham distanced himself from his family, he was able to build a trust, solid trust in God to the extent that he did not even think twice when God asked him to sacrifice his son. And because he obeyed God, because he showed his love for God, the scripture says he became the friend of God. They bond together. So this is the time for us also to grow in our love for God and to bond together. Also, um, in solitary, Jacob was able to connect with God. He was able to connect with God so that in Genesis 28, verse 21 to 22, the scripture let us know that while he was alone in Bethel, he named the place Bethel. He had a dream. And when he dreamt, when he rose up, he made a vow to devote himself to God and also to give God tenth of all things that he would acquire on his journey as sacrifice to God. So you can see that solitary, a time like this is a time for us to be close to God. So I want to beseech everyone, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this period is not going to be a waste in your life. It's not going to be a waste in my life. After this episode, I will be able to sit down and I will be able to evaluate everything that I was able to do at this period. And I should be able to say, thank you, Lord, that I have grown in my love for you. I have connected with you. Because, brethren, in connecting with God, in loving God, that is where lies our blessings. 
bonding and growing in love are mutually rewarding. When you grow, when you bond and you grow in your love with God, it's mutually rewarding. Isaiah 51 verses 1 to 2. Isaiah 51 verses 1 to 2 says, listen to me. You who follow after righteousness, who seek the Lord, that is those of us at this time who are seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You are putting seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So God is saying to, to you, he says, look to the rock from which you are hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you are dug. He was talking about Abraham, that we should look at Abraham. You remember that we have said that Abraham is our father. Because through the Lord Jesus Christ, we are descendants of Abraham. So the scripture is saying, God is saying, look at Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For I called him alone. I called him alone because I want to be alone with him. It's one-on-one. -on -one. The relationship of God with his children is always one-on-one. -on -one. My relationship with God is one-on-one. -on -one. Your relationship with God is one-on-one. -on -one. God deals with us as individuals, not as a group. You understand? Good. Say, I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him. You see, God blessed Pa Abraham and made him a blessing in return for Pa Abraham's love for God. Because when Father God asked him, give me your son Isaac, and he did not think twice. And God said, now I know that you love me. I know that you fear me. And in return, God swore by himself. So you can see that when you burn or you, and you grow in your love with God, it's always, always mutually rewarding. So brethren, let us take advantage of this time to study the scripture, to pray, and to move closer to God. Now, you will remember that when Jacob was going to the land of the unknown, when he was going to Laban, when he was going to Laban, and he made a vow, he made a vow to God, saying, we just read the vow, saying, God, um, I'm going to build a house for you, I'm going to give you a tenth of whatever you give me, if you will look after me and all that. So he made a vow to love God, and he committed himself to God. And God in return, God in return, also told him that he would be with him and he will fulfill everything that he has promised him. Now, if you look at Genesis 31, 13, this is after, after everything had ended and Jacob was about to leave the house of labor, God appeared to him and God reminded him of his vow. God said, I am the God of Bethel. You remember Bethel? That was the place that God, Jacob had a dream and he built an altar for God and he promised to build a house for God, a house of worship. He says, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me, now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. And before God said this, you remember what God has done. God protected Jacob from labor. God also transferred the wealth of Laban to Jacob. So you can see that God always remember when you make up your mind to love him and to serve him and to commit yourself and your procession to him, God, everything I give unto you, God will always remember. So you can see that growing in love and bonding with God is always mutually rewarding. After, um, after Jacob left Laban, he left Laban's house without Laban knowing because he felt that Laban would not allow him to go scot-free. Do you know that Laban went after him and Laban, his uncle, planned to kill him? But God intervened. God secured Jacob, his family, and his possession. Why? Because of his love for God. Genesis 31, 29, it says, it is in my power to do you harm. That is Laban, after he met with Jacob, 
He said, it is in my hand to do harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, be careful that you speak to Jacob, neither good nor bad. You see, that God remembered the love of Jacob, and God protected Jacob from death at the end of Laban in fulfillment of his promise to Jacob after the encounter that Jacob had with God on his way to um, Paran. That is Laban's um, country. Now, you can see that Jacob's righteousness and love for God spoke for him. Jacob's righteousness and love for God spoke for him. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that even as you set your heart to seek the Lord God Almighty, as you set your heart to go after him, to seek him, to meditate upon his word and to pray and to be alone with him in the mighty name of Jesus, that your love for God will speak for you after this episode in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And now you can see Genesis 31 verse 38 to 40. Genesis 31 verse 38 to 40. This is what Jacob said. Jacob said to, um, uh, to Laban when they met, said, these 20 years I have been with you. Your heirs, your female goats have not miscarried their young. And I have not eaten the rams of your flock. Verse 39. That, that which was torn by the beast, I did not bring to you. I replaced them. I bought the loss of it. Even if I bring them to you, if I bring the news to you, you require it from my hand. Whether they were stolen by day or they were stolen by night, everything I have to pay. So you can see how Jacob worked hard to serve Laban. Yet Laban was planning that when Jacob would be living, Jacob would live empty-handed. Can you just believe that? What saved Jacob was his love, the expression of his love for God and his closeness with God. Verse 40 now says, There I was in the day of drought consumed me and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. So you can see all those things that he went through. The question one will ask is, what would have happened to Jacob's vow of giving a tenth of his possession to God if he had left Laban's house empty-handed? So you can see how God works. God would not allow it. Because of the bonding, because of the love between God and Jacob. Because Jacob vowed that God if you will bless me, the tenth of everything that I have, I will give to you. There was no way that God would have allowed him to go empty-handed. Genesis 31, 42 says, unless, now this is Jacob that was now talking to Laban. He says, unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. But God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and he rebuked you last night. So you can see that bonding with God, loving God is mutually rewarding and this season should not be a waste. We should utilize this season to be closer to God. This season affords us the opportunity to grow in our love. Grow in our love because God cares for what we care for. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Let us know that God cares for whatever you care for, God cares for it. So he says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Amen. So brethren, let us utilize this season of isolation to grow in our love and bond for God through deep meditation on his word. Because you can know God and you can come close to God through his word, 
God is his word. He, the scripture says he honors his word even above his name. So if you want to grow in love with God, spend time on the scripture. Spend time on the Bible. This time, I should expect every one of us at least to read, even if it's one chapter of the scripture a day. Because we have the time. Being alone with God helps us to appreciate Him. It's a season. It's a season for us to go in love with God. Amen. Amen. So, brethren, that is in our relationship with God. What about our relation with ourselves? Let Distancing and quiet time restricts distraction so that we can focus on who we love, on our love. Your spouse, your children, your friends, and family. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14 says, Bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. So you can see, just imagine a family being together for days without stepping out. You see, it is an amazing time. Extraordinary time, but it's beneficial. When you see family together, you are together in the same house for days, seven days, eight days, without going out, you wake up, you see one another, you will appreciate one another. It is a time for us to accommodate one another's weaknesses. It is a season for love. We should make allowance. We should make allowance for others' fault. Otherwise, we cannot be together. When you are together in a house with your wife, with your children, you, know, you can forgive. You'll be able to understand your weaknesses. You'll be able to give allowance for the faults. You, you know, forgive one another. Just as Christ forgive us. It's a season for us to clothe ourselves with love, which binds us in perfect harmony. So you can see the advantage that this is good. Most of the times, we are already to go to work. We come back. We are just walking, walking. I don't know, for 20 years I've been in this country, is one work or the other going to work and what of you. But this period, my wife said it the other time that this is the first time ever that we will be in the same house for days without going out. Can you see the advantage? Being in love and growing in love relieve burden of distancing or quarantine or lockdown. You see, when you grow in love for your wife, for your partner, for your children, this period that we're, I don't know, how long have you been locked down? I don't I can't even know. Is it one week, two? I can't remember. It's been a month or well, whatever, whatever. You see, it's to be, it's, it, it, it doesn't seem long. And that is what happened to Jacob. Can you see Jacob in Genesis 29 verse 20? Jacob served seven days for Rachel and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love that he had for her. Brethren, Jacob actually served for 14 years to pay the dowry for Rachel. What happened? What happened was that the first time he met Rachel, he had feeling for Rachel. But over the years, for year in, year out, the love began to grow. So at the end of seven years, when he was supposed to have Rachel and Laban gave him the elder sister, Leah. And Rachel, I mean, Jacob said he wanted Rachel. And the father said, can you serve me for another seven years? Making 14 years. 
he did not even bother. He said, yes, I will serve you for another seven years. So 14 years, a man waited for the hand of a woman in marriage. Why? Because of love. Because he grew in love. They were living in the same compound, in the same neighbor, in the same house, because Jacob was living with them. So the love grew. So you can see the advantage of being together, that this period we should appreciate one another. We should look at the, you know, the good that we can see in one another and forgive one another. May the Lord God Almighty be with us and answer our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This person, quarantine provides the occasion for you to love yourself. It's time for us to love ourselves by resting and also to do self-evaluation. In Isaiah 30 verse 15, God is saying, for thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and in resting you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But you will not, but now you must, because now you are compelled to do it. Then we did not, because we are always going to walk, 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 walk. We had no time to pray, no time to, for scripture, nothing. No time to evaluate ourselves, no time to count our blessings. All we are doing is just the next day meal, the next day paycheck. That is all we are be, doing. But now we are compelled to stay at home, to rest, and to love ourselves. And by that, by so doing, we'll be able to evaluate ourselves. We'll be able to count our blessings. So when we are able to see what we've been, we've been able to achieve, then we, that will give us confidence. Now we have no option than to rest. It is a season of blessing. This is the time for us to boost our faith in God, to trust God absolutely. It is a period for us to have a sober reflection of our existence. Count your blessings so that you can gain confidence in yourself. There are certain things that you have achieved that you may not know. You may be thinking, oh, I've been in this station for how long? What have I achieved? This is the time for you to take stock to take stock of what you've been able to achieve. And you will see that indeed you have achieved a lot. And this will give you the confidence so that you'll be able to do more and better, even as the Lord helps you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God Almighty will help you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, I want to give you this confidence. This is this confidence from the scripture. That you can do everything. You can do everything you lay to heart. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that is the truth. You can do everything through Christ who gives you the strength. In that case, love yourself. Do not deprive yourself of your desire. Do not stay in between your dream and your accomplishment because you can do more. Break the limits. There's no limit to what you can achieve as long as you can dream it. And this is the period to dream. It is the period to dream. Thank God for COVID-19. Thank God for the lockdown. It is time to take stock and to have a dream. Since you know you can do everything through the strength supplied by Christ, the only limit to what you can achieve is that limit created by you. There is no other limit. As far as God is concerned, you can do everything. Second Kings chapter 13, verse 18. Second Kings chapter 13, verse 18. And this is what happened. In this case, a king in Israel, his name was Joash. He went to the man of God, Elisha, because the Syrians were troubling Israel. They were waging war against Israel. And Elisha was about to die. So he wept and said, my father, my father, this, we have this problem. Please help us. 
And Elisha told him, said, you must strike the Syrians till you have destroyed them completely. So in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 18, he gave him an arrow and he asked him to strike the ground. Then he said, take the arrows. So he took them and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. Verse 19, and the man of God was angry with him and said, you can do better. That is better than your best. He says, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you have destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. So can you see? That means that he would win the war only three times out of five or six times. Because he did not do his utmost best. So brethren, that is better than best. You can do better. When you take stock, dream bigger dream. Dream this period in the name of Jesus. Now compare this with Jacob. Compare this with Jacob. Now, Jacob too could have stayed contented with Leah, but because he preferred, because he preferred Rachel. Rich, Leah too was beautiful. The scripture says Leah's eyes were delicate, but the problem, the issue is that Rachel was beautiful in figure. You understand what that means by being beautiful in figure, right? Good. And he says also in appearance, it was, she was beautiful in figure and she was beautiful in face, you know, when you look at her. So because Jacob loved Rachel for her beauty, even though Leah was beautiful, he determined to work another seven years for Rachel. And that paid off. How did it pay off? Because Rachel was the mother of Joseph. Joseph was the favorite son of Jacob. Joseph was the deliverer of, the, of a generation of Israel. And Joseph was the one that was in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember the covenant of God with Father Abraham, which says, in your descendant, Abraham, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Now, imagine that Jacob had stopped with Leah. What would have happened to the covenant? So you can see that we can do more. So this is the period. Thank God for COVID-19. Thank God for the lockdown. Let us take stock. Let us think. Let us think deeply and have dreams. In the name of Jesus, amen. In conclusion, I want to encourage you to let you know that you are not a failure. You are not a failure because you failed. You are if you fail to try again. Until you accomplish your utmost desire, do not settle for less. Best is not the best if there is better than the best. I therefore encourage everyone, take advantage of this time. There is an advantage. There is an advantage in this season. Take the advantage and take the advantage and dream bigger dream and may god bless you in the mighty name of jesus amen